Ward, what are you doing here? Katie called and told me that you requested a flight to Asia. Where are you going, Danny? It's complicated, okay? Well, here's something simple. I'm standing between you and the plane. <laughs> Don't try and kung fu me, man. I can take a punch. I have to understand the legacy of the Iron Fist. My place in it. Hai Ching Yang helped Davos get his hands on a corpse of an Iron Fist. Whoever supplied the body may have the answers I need. Call them on the telephone. It's not that simple. It's part of a larger journey. I've got to find my true path in this world. Yo, man, that guy right there, um, our special guest, Heather, like us, I don't know if Tom really real, realizes it, but we actually share a lot in common. We're, we're both a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I want to welcome Tom Pelfrey to the show. Tom, Tom, what up? <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Hey, Sway. Thanks for having me. How you guys doing? Doing great, man. Uh, man, I don't know. I want to start the conversation. First of all, I think you're amazing. I'll tell you why. But uh, you were in Iron Fist. We were in Luke Cage, and we were just as shocked as uh, probably I'm assuming you were when all the Marvel shows didn't get renewed. Uh, what what did you? How did you react to that? Yeah, it was pretty surprising. I mean, it kind of happened across the board really fast. But you were on Luke Cage, so you worked with my buddy Mike Coulter. So Mike Coulter and I went to the same college. Okay. Um, and so he was, yeah, he was there when I was there. So, yeah, small world. Oh, wow. Mike Coulter, and I, and I stay in touch with Mike. Y'all went to Rutgers? What, he went to Rutgers? Yeah, exactly. So Mike was in the graduate acting program, and his last year at school was my first year in undergrad. You, you hear that? That's Heather? Jersey, Sway. That's Jersey. That's a Jersey thing, Sway. You wouldn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I'm trying to teach him the ways of New Jersey, but he he he's conformed to to Oakland. So he, I'm, I'm I'm he's stuck in Oakland world. So I, I'm I'm working on him. Tom. Keep working on him. Keep yeah, working well, on him. <laughs> uh, man, we got Tom Pelfrey, two time Emmy winning actor. Um, you know, I I used to watch you on the soaps. I remember seeing you on the soaps, and I remember also seeing oh, you wow. on Banshee. Um, as well, and it's mm-hmm. like, yo, this guy keeps popping up. But I, you know, you did well with Guiding Light and As the World Turns and all these uh, different soap operas. You've done something that a lot of soap actors who are on soap operas have a hard time doing, and that's transitioning from soap operas to the big screen. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. how hard was that transition for you? Well, it definitely was a transition, and at a certain point there was a lot of money on the table that I had to say no to, you know, that that's part of the, I think part of the difficulty of walk, well, difficulty of walking away from any job, but certainly on the soap, there was a point in time where there were job offers and a lot of money. And it was a decision to that, you know, that ultimately that wasn't all that I wanted to do, but in order to move on, try other things, there had to be a sort of, you know, a, a discipline of, of saying no to some money and believing in myself and moving on. But, it, yeah, it took a while. When, when you finally came to your senses and start saying yes to the money. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, listen, it took a while. And there was definitely things that I was like, what the hell did I say no to? <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, man. I can only imagine, like, uh, if if you can, like, not not now what you get paid is so different, but what was your first significant check outside of soaps that you went, oh, shit, I'm glad I made this decision? Like, what was the range? Yeah, it was probably, I mean, really, that kind of money probably wasn't until Banshee where I was like, oh, this is, Oh, I see how this works now. And that was, you know, to be honest with you, like I was on Guiding Light for two and a half years right out of school. So, you know, I left that job by the time I was 25 as the world turns was just a few months. And so there was like five or six years there where you just didn't really make money again, which is which is okay. But, yeah, it's definitely a grind. Damn. Can you even imagine that five? That's the life of a... um... That's acting, man. You got to be really dedicated and committed to it. Um, I read somewhere that we're we're all in this quarantine, and because of that, it's been hard for a lot of actors trying to find work from home. Uh, but you, you, you guys, you've experienced this um, 
you and the several cast members were actually ordered to quarantine in New York City uh, years ago during Guiding Light. Is that true on the set of Guiding Light? Yeah, well, yeah, the fire department came because I think on one of our sets, on one of our hospital sets, a thermometer broke. So there was the potential for mercury poisoning. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we got quarantined. But, you know, it lasted like six hours, and I'm sure we were all more than happy to just sit in our rooms and (laughs) not do anything. Yeah, that's different from now. Now it's lasting six weeks. (laughs) <laughs> no, I know. I know. Big difference. <laughs> Big difference. Um, l- listen, man, I said you were calling in today and the phones lit up because of um, Ozark. And, yeah. you know, o- Ozark is, is, is such an incredible season. Season three was amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Man, I've been saying since I watched you play the, the season three, Ben Davis, the role of Ben Davis, bro, you, you should be lined up for so many different awards the way you came off on it, that it, you were so believable and I hated you sometimes, but I loved you in other times, you know, it was like, yo, why can't this guy get it together? When you're in a mm-hmm. ensemble of actors like Jason and, and, uh, and Laura and, and Sophia and Julia Garner and all these different folks, what, do you know that man we're in, we're in the middle of a moment that's magic can't and, and how does that affect you as an actor does it make you raise your chops to make sure you perform well oh yeah without a doubt i mean i was a i was a big fan of ozark just as someone who watches the show you know long before i auditioned so i knew what they were doing over there i knew it was a great show i knew it was great writing <clears throat> and then yeah when when you get a chance to work with actors like jason bateman laura linney julia garner Janet McTeer, I mean, these are people that, I mean, some of them, like Jason, Laura, Janet, these are people I've looked up to since I was in college at Rutgers. You know, these are people whose work that's inspired me. And so, yeah, when you show up to work with them, it's it's on a different level. And there's a version of that where you kind of get to meet some of your heroes and work with them where it might be uncomfortable or there might be a lot of ego or there might be a lot of drama. That was not the case on Ozark. All of these people were wonderful human beings, um, extremely welcoming, uh, very generous with their time and with their energy. Made me feel like I've been there with them from the beginning, which creates a really, a really magical, safe, beautiful work environment that is not the case always. You know, it's kind of rare. So, yeah, getting to work on Ozark with those people uh, obviously a great opportunity and whenever you work with really good actors it makes you better like that's just the bottom line like when you work with some you always want to be working with people who are better than you because they raise your game they teach you things you know leaving Ozark I felt like I left a better actor than when I went in so many people felt such a connection to your character, even through like all the annoying spurts <laughs> that came along with it. And so I'm wondering, because of how, what the incredible job that you did, was there ever a point that some of your coworkers or the directors were like, dang, maybe we shouldn't have, spoiler alert, killed you off? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I feel like, I feel like the truth is that that story is, self-contained and, okay, and just... part of the beauty of of that character to me is the fact that it kind of had to end the way that it did you know I, mm-hmm. I feel like they almost set it up the character of Ben right from the beginning when he's in the classroom with the kids like you kind of understand his sense of right and wrong you kind of understand obviously his temper And Mm -hmm. it sets up a dynamic where he's going into the, you know, the Ozark world and the birds world. And the sort of tragedy is that somebody like him would never be able to survive there. And so ultimately, I think they did the right thing storytelling wise by, you know, having Mm -hmm. things ended the way that they did. We Mm -hmm. have Tom Pelfrey here from Ozark. You want to talk to him, 888-742-3345. We're going to jump back into some music and come right back with Tom. Swain in the morning, Shade 45. There you are. Hey, don't bother. The sheriff got me out. Behind me, Aaron. You won't know what a piece of shit your mother is, Aaron? Can she be a fucking lawyer? Well, she ain't. She's a fucking monster.
My sister is a monster. Her husband is a monster, too. You know what they really do? Who they really work for, Aaron? They launder drug money. Drug money, Aaron, for the Navarro drug cartel. That's enough. You need to turn around and you need to leave now. Fuck you. Mom. Your mom, your mom has people killed and tortured for the cartel. Do you remember that truck that got all shot up? They're in the middle of a fucking drug war. That could have been your fucking house. Enough! Get out! <laughs> Man, that's Tom Pelfrey on the line with us who, who played Ben Davis in season three of the series Ozark. And that was an incredible scene. Hey man, when you listen yeah, to that, you're my angry acting. What's that? Yeah, I mean, that and he laughs. You hear my angry acting, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, are you able to step outside of yourself and go, "Oh shit, I killed that scene." <laughs> well, you know, it seemed like that. It's like when it when it gets emotional, sometimes like that, you don't even really remember exactly how it goes, which is usually the best sign that you're in that you're in the right place that like mm -hmm. that you're kind of outside of yourself and you're kind of just looking to come through you. And, and then when you're done, you're kind of just exhausted and you don't remember exactly how it went. Um, but no, you, it's, it's a matter of like, I feel like you can feel when you're connected and you can feel when you're being truthful. And then sometimes the only, the only check you have of like, was I right to think that that was connected or truthful is when you see it, it's kind of like, does that look how it felt? Yeah. And mm. you know, that scene did. So then that's, that's kind of the measure of for myself, whether, whether I think it was good or not. And then, you know, for other people to decide whether they like it or not, of course, but like, yeah, you can kind of tell when you're in the scene in the moment that, that you're connected, that you're working off your partner, that it's that it's real, that something is coming up, maybe that surprised you, and those are usually all the good signs that you're in the right place. Um, um, yeah. Tom, speaking of place, um, Sway mentioned earlier in the show. I grew up in New Jersey as well, and for you, nice. I don't know. Yeah, man, for you. It, did it ever feel like, even though New York City can be like a train ride up or a, a bus ride away and, and, and wanting to be in the industry, did New York City and making it big ever just feel so far away? If you could speak to that to some people that may be listening that live in smaller towns. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think the thing is, is, like, whenever you whenever you take a step back sometimes and look at it, down the road, down the line, big picture, especially if you start comparing yourself to other people, it can be intimidating and that can mm -hmm. feel overwhelming. That can feel like it's going to be impossible. And I think the thing to do is to combat that, what, you know, wherever you're living, small town, whatever, um, is just, you got to keep your head down. You got to just do your work. You know, like whenever I will pull back and think about like, is this going to happen for me? Can I make it? Will I succeed? It's like that's when the fear comes in. That's when the self-doubt can come in. But it's but I always feel good when I have my head down, when I'm focusing on my work, because it's like what's in my control, you know? Mm -hmm. What's in my control is that I'm taking care of myself as a human being. I'm taking care of my health. I'm keeping my head straight, which, you know, sometimes takes more work than others. <laughs> and then I'm working on my craft. I'm learning how to be a better actor. If I'm not working, I'm in class. It's like, these are all things that I can control. And, like, it just feels better on top of it when I'm working, when I'm focusing on work, when I'm focusing on making myself better. I feel better. And then I'm not thinking about whether or not I can succeed. And, of course, the irony here is, the more time and energy that you spend focusing on yourself, focusing on making yourself better, the greater your chances of succeeding are, you know? And I think it's, I think it's a, a dangerous temptation that we can all fall into where you start looking into the future, you start looking at what everybody else is doing and you start comparing yourself. And the thing is, it's useless. It's useless information. Like somebody else's journey is their journey. Their life is mm -hmm. completely different than yours. If you start comparing where you're at to where they're at, it is just not useful information. And all it does ever is make you feel bad. 
I would imagine. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think I think the advice is just focus on yourself. Just control what you can control. Do your work. Uh, Tom Pelfrey is here. Play Ben Davis in Ozark. Uh, there's a lot of people on the lines, and I promised that these callers would be able to talk with you directly. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there about your character. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we 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 got to get answers right now. That's really, you know, we we did the butter up. Now we trying to get the answers. So I I, I want to li- <laughs> I'm gonna let a, I'm gonna let Alyssa fire the first shot. She's in North Carolina. Good morning, Alyssa. How are you? Good morning. How are you guys? Doing great. Go ahead. Hey, That's great. Um, yeah, I have a question because I got super obsessed with the show recently. Just started watching because we're all obviously locked inside. But I need to know whether or not if there's any chance that you are coming back to the show because you ended up being my favorite character and completely obsessed with him. So needed to know if there was any chance because I started this whole like conspiracy thing that since they didn't show the body and they did it and they killed off the other person, I won't say for spoilers. Right. I need to know whether or not you're alive or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, Alyssa. Um, yeah, I've heard some of these conspiracy theories. Some of them started in the hair and makeup trailer when we were still filming. But <laughs> I, I do believe, I do believe that Ben might actually not be there anymore. Um, only because I feel like that is the strongest version of telling that story that there is. I, I may be wrong, and. For sure, we don't know 100% for certain. Um, but, yeah, I I personally think that that might be the end of Ben. <laughs> well, okay. I hope it's not. Again, you did terrific. Again, you became my favorite character so quickly. Like, even the first episode, I just said I loved him. And he just resonated with me. And like, people, like, I have my own problems, and I just felt it on a personal level. So I think that's what brought me to him more. <laughs> But again, you did uh, terrific. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. I love you guys, and thank you, thank everybody. You. It's Sway in the morning. All right, thank you're you. a citizen, Alyssa. It's Sway in the morning. That's okay. beautiful. Love you thank guys. You, Alyssa. Yeah, love you too. Uh, I, I feel like Tom kind of Tom kind of left it open ended, though. I didn't I didn't get it for certain one hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like y'all y'all felt me on that, right? Yeah, uh, a little ambiguous. A little ambiguous. Okay, I see what you did there, Tom. Lisa's on the line from Tennessee. <laughs> good, morning, good morning, Lisa. Everyone. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Tom. Hey, Hi, Tom. Lisa. I want to. Hi, how are you? Go back to. I'm. I'm very well, thank you. Um, I, I really like your work. I want to go back to Banshee, and um, that character mm. you played, and then the character mm. you played in Iron Fist. Like, there's a versatility in each character you play. Like in Banshee, you were this. Um, uh, you know, that guy that you were and you transformed and wanted to be good and be the police officer. And then in Iron right. Fist, you were like this asshole, right? And then in the end, like you had this heart and you were really, you know, for um, uh, what's his name, Danny. So just the versatility in the character you, uh, the characters you play um, and how you yeah. uh transform that and and um express that on the screen is is really good i really enjoy your characters oh thank you very much yeah yeah iron fist was uh banshee was the kind of job that made more sense to me in terms of my temperament i suppose and how i usually get cast um iron fist was the one that surprised me a bit at first i was like you want me to play the billionaire kind of jerk in the suit um because any acting job i'd ever had i it's almost always blue collar i definitely never got to wear nice clothes before so yeah iron fist was a bit surprising but then i I really the character really grew on me it's very very different character from who i am so it was a lot of fun to work on i thought the writers did a good job of making him uh pretty funny too yeah Um, i agree Lisa, great question. You're a citizen. A sway in the morning. Yo, uh, so. Wow. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Flaunt yeah, it, yeah. Lisa. People don't dress up in Jersey? What, what does that mean? <laughs> he, no, it is just usually if you're going to cast a guy in a suit, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Jersey thing, Kevin. All right, we See, got that's uh, hate, nothing but hate coming from that's you hate right, right now, there. Okay, so, okay. Was an yeah. observation, yeah. observation. Uh, Mary Jane in Boston. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Mary. Good morning. 
Good morning. Well, then I have to turn my radio off, I think. Okay, oh. I know the rules. <laughs> Damn, actually. shit. Tom's on the line. He won't be here forever. Mary Jane? <laughs> Damn, Mary Jane. Uh-oh. What the hell just happened? Um, she, she was getting out of her car. Maybe car. it switched over to like from her Bluetooth in her car to ear, her earpiece, uh, and she just okay. lost us. She lost us. Okay, Ooh. D'Artagnan is in uh, North Carolina. Good morning. How are you? Morning. Oh, shit. Damn. Okay. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Yeah. yeah how you doing, bro? Hey, hey good morning, Sway in the morning. Um, ben, I mean, uh, Tom, how, how's everybody doing this morning? <laughs> <laughs> good how you doing oh i'm great man i'm great man i'm a soldier down here at fort brad north carolina man uh i've been a big fan of yours ever since banshee like that was pretty a very good series like you came out you know playing that rate racist or cop that like had a change over to like love everybody you know that was great mm-hmm. and then to see you on uh ozark and then you went to like a whole different place with that kind of like lisa was saying earlier like how do you pay play like different roles? Like my daughter, she's like a eight, nine, ten, and uh, she's yeah. got like aspirations, I guess, of being an actor. So she's always watching like Nickelodeon and all that other stuff. And um, yeah. basically, I just want to know: Were you like on the acting stuff from a young age, or did it just come like, you know, what I mean, later mm-hmm. on in life? Yeah, well, I had a I had an amazing uh, teacher when I was fourteen years old, Steve Kazakoff, at my high school. And he changed my life. You know, I, I I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I played sports, but I was terrible at all of them. I hadn't really found anything I was very good at. <laughs> and then when I met this guy, uh, it was something, acting was something I loved to do. And I was, you know, pretty good at it. But also this man was very disciplined, very strict, and he made it very important. And I think if I'd had a different mm. introduction to acting, I probably wouldn't have done it because it would have seemed like a joke. Like I hear a lot of people's high school stories and I don't think I would have kept doing it if, if the teacher I had wasn't Kazakoff. So, so yeah, that's, that was something that changed my life and kind of never looked back. Would would you recommend that his daughter uh, take classes early now that she's in grade school? Yeah, I mean, if if she's really feeling a calling for it, and you feel like you find a good a good teacher for her, then absolutely, you know, take some classes. And I think especially when you're, you know, like I started studying or whatever, taking acting classes when I was fourteen. I didn't have a professional job until I was twenty two out of college. So that's eight years there where I can Damn. just focus on, you know, trying to get better, trying to learn, which is which is an important time. So yeah, if, if that's something your daughter's into, I think an acting class can be a, a great thing, uh, especially for a young person, especially for a person who, you know, about to be a teenager, like it, it can help you with confidence. It can help you with speaking in public. It can help you with learning how to be around people and be comfortable in your own body. So I don't think that there's any downside to starting whenever she feels like she's ready. Hey, hey D'Artagnan, okay. hey, good luck to you. Huh? Absolutely. Hey, I got one more question. I'm no, wait, sorry. hold on, D'Artagnan. Let me give you your citizenship real quick, all right? D'Artagnan, you're a citizen. <laughs> okay, you don't you don't get that second question, though. I'm going to go ahead and keep it moving. Uh, we got Stephen from Maryland on the line. Stephen, good morning. Hey, Stephen. Good morning. How you guys doing? Doing right. great. You get the last question. Go yeah, for man. it. All right, brother. I, well, I wanted to just say, listen, man, me and my wife are huge fans of Ozark and everything, and our emotional connection to your character, like, I pride myself as a man's man, dude. You had us bawling, you know what I mean, like, crying like crazy. So, I mean, the, your ability to, to portray that character is second to none. I don't think anybody could have played that character. Um, but uh, my question to you would be, uh, since the show and everything, has that actually opened – you know, the door, more doors for you. And I mean, are, are we looking to see you in, you know, future endeavors with Jason Bateman? Because I feel like he is like an incredible director. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's, he's an amazing guy. Um, first of all, thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, some calls have come in from, from the show. Um, but yeah, Ozark was just, Ozark was a dream job. I kind of knew it from the beginning and it stayed that way the whole way through. Like I felt like it was a character that I could relate to and, and embody. But at the same time, that is such a credit to their writing 
what they're doing over there, their show. So in all, you know, across every possible dimension, it felt like one of those jobs that's just a special job. And so, yeah, I would imagine it would lead to more opportunities for me. But really the predominant feeling is just like as an actor, when you get a chance to be part of something that you believe is great, and that you can step up or whatever and help the thing be what it is, that in and of itself is just a very satisfying moment in time. It's it's moments like that that justify all the hard years. You know, that's the thing that you're looking for is like, I just want to be a part of something that I believe in. And, um, and Ozark was that for me. And so I'll be grateful for, for this job forever. Uh, yeah, you, the, nobody could have articulated that work like that, man. I tell you, that's just incredible, though. I really appreciate what you did with that show because, you know, obviously you need to have that kind of level of acting to keep these shows going because you get so emotionally involved in these shows and then they ax them. So I think that you did a great service to it, and thank you very much. Uh, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Man, Steven, you're a citizen, yes, bro. That's way you right. Tell your wife she's a citizen, All too. All right, guys. All right, man. Okay, uh, man, you. Tom, this could happen. We could do this all day. I don't know if you see. You got a lot of people <laughs> who, who respect your work. But congratulations, and even taking on a character that had, clinically, it was bipolar disorder, right, that Ben had? That's right, yeah. Uh, yep. yep. And and I'm wondering, did you get any, what kind of reaction did you get from that community on the way you portrayed well, A lot of people have been reaching out on, on social media and stuff, and some of the messages are just really touching and it's and it's all you want to hear which is just to say that from some of the folks who have reached out and and they might have a family member or a son or a parent who is dealing with bipolar that the messages say that there were things about ben in ozark that really captured the truth of what that was for them and you know any time that you can shed some light on an issue like that you know, and and feel like you're telling some version of the truth of it, and that gives people comfort to be seen or heard or understood on some level because they're seeing some version of their situation reflected back at them. Then that's, you know, that's why we do this. Like that's that's the ultimate praise, and that makes me feel really good and also happy that there's that character out there that you know, these folks can, can relate to and, um, and, and, you know, grateful that we didn't mess it up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You definitely didn't mess it up. Uh, and I think it probably made some people who are unaware actually do the research and find out more about it. You did an excellent job, a job, Tom, when the quarantine is over, if you're ever in New York, come see us, man. It's just across the bridge. Uh, I would love that. I would <laughs> All right. love that. That'd okay. You ain't got to wear a suit. Yeah. Just be yourself. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tom Pelfrey. It, Tom. Okay. Nah, nah, it's good. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> Tom, take care, Tom. And you're a citizen, Just brother. Just keep educating in the them on Jersey. Just I keep got educating you. Them. Thank yeah, you, you guys so much for having me. All, All right. right. Bye, Absolutely. Tom. All right. Tom Pelfrey, man. I can't believe we got that guy. That was just like a, a on my wish list, and it actually happened. Um,